Okay. Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscherini and for our unit on forces and motion today's lesson will be about mass and weight. Very often someone asks, how much is your weight? And normally you, you answer, oh my weight is, say, 50 kilograms. Now not only this is a much feared question, but it's actually uh, wrong, because when you talk about 50 kilograms, and when you're using a bathroom scale, you're not measuring your weight, you're measuring your mass. Mass and weight are two concepts which are linked together but are quite different one from the other. In today's lesson we're going to see the differences between mass and weight. And here's the first list. As you can see here, there's a series of sentences related to mass and here they're related to weight. Let's start with the first one. You already know that mass is the amount of matter in an object. Weight, on the other hand, is a measure of a pull of gravity on an object. In the international system, the unit for measurement for mass is the kilogram, symbol kg, in the international system of units, the unit for weight is the Newton, because weight is a force. You can measure mass using a scale. We already done that. We used uh, double pan scales or triple beam scales. Weight, on the other hand, being a force, can be measured using a spring balance or Newton meter. Mass does not have a direction. It's given just by a quantity and its unit. Therefore, mass is a scalar. On the other hand, weight, being a force, does also have a direction and therefore is a vector. Last but not least, mass, since it depends only on the internal composition of an object, it depends on the number and type and relative arrangement of molecules inside an object it does not change with location. On the other hand, weight depends on the local gravitational force field, therefore can change with location. So what's the link between mass and weight? Why are they often confused one with the other? And the answer is pretty simple, because mass and weight they depend on each other. Actually, weight depends on an object's mass. And the relationship comes out directly from Newton's second law of motion. If you remember, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, if we replace the generic force with weight, you see that weight is related to the mass object, and instead of the acceleration, so any kind of acceleration, we have a very specific one, we have G. If you remember, G is the acceleration of free fall, the acceleration of gravity. So to get the weight of an object in Newtons, you just have to multiply the mass of that object in kilograms times the acceleration of gravity. From this formula, also comes out that mass and weight are directly proportional. And that means that if you double the mass, so the weight will accordingly double. If you divide the mass by two, also the weight will be divided by two. So let's see an example. Let's take again our friend Eddie the Elephant. On the Earth, his mass is 600 kilograms. Now, since the gravitational force field on the Earth, g is equal to 10 meters to second squared, if you multiply this by this, you will get, get that the weight of Eddie is 6,000 newtons. Now, if you manage 
to find a space large enough and send Eddie on the moon, what do you will find? You will find that Eddie's mass has not changed. It's still 600 kilograms. But now, since the gravitational force field on the moon is six times smaller, and actually it's 1.6, you can do your math and find that the weight of Eddie is a thousand newtons. Finally, if you manage to trick him into going into this in deep space where we can say that gravity is more or less zero, again the mass of Eddie has not changed, but his weight is virtually zero. So, what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate, that means to distinguish, to tell the difference between mass and weight. Our next lesson will be about the last, the third law of motion by Sir Isaac Newton, and finally an application of the second law, that is friction and braking.